Happy morning. Happy morning. You blast out this book last night. Like, what I time did you go to bed? 30. I didn't know if you'd end up reading it in the morning. I started it up. at, what was it, 8.30, 9 o'clock? So you powerhoused through it because this is a long book. Yeah, I know. I kept looking at the percentage. I even said to Spencer, I'm like, baby, this happened. And I'm only halfway through the fucking book. That, I was trying to tell you. I was like, dude, 25%. There's so much more book. And there's so much work. I don't know what to do with myself. Yeah. So we need to stop talking about the book without talking about the book. Hello. Essay announcement. Hi. I just want to say that we are human. We're learning as we go. These books, Lunamare and Koramare, were given to us as ARCs. And we fully appreciate that and we love that but because they were given to us as arcs we didn't have a lot of outside influence to go from so it's not like we already had a bunch of people who have read the book it, it's not like we already had an audiobook for it it's not like we had all these written in ways of we knew how to say the characters names or different things so i just want to step in and kind of i guess oh we figured it out. We learned. We're sorry. But apparently we said the main character's name the entire last video because her name is spelled N-E-R-I-D-A. And looking at that as a U.S. American, US American we see that and it looks the same as Merida, just switching out the M and the N. So we're calling it Merida. Mm -hmm. And that was just our best frame of reference. So that's what we went with. And honestly, that's a cool name. So we went with it. Since the book has then been released and the audiobook has been released for it. And obviously the audiobook was approved by Pepper Winters. So obviously they would have the correct pronunciation. In the audiobook, they call her Narita. So we apologize if anyone is frustrated or upset that we spent several hours butchering her name so i just want to apologize little psa we're human we read it as we read it we do try our best to say what we can and get names right where we can but at the we end are of the not day perfect and we have yeah. stupid english brains we have stupid american brains we called her that but then we just called her nary for like the majority and exactly so that's what we might do in this one. We're probably so. going to call her Neri for most of it so that I don't screw up. <laughs> so we're doing our best and we want to respect like the work in the names and the cultures and stuff because it's right. But and I'm also a big proponent of if somebody tells you how to say someone's name fix or it. their own name, you fix it and you make a big effort to do so. I know we learned so. that the hard way in one of the other books we read. Did I go on a little mini rant? Maybe a little. <laughs> she didn't want to be called Cora Bell. Seriously. No, I, I get it. Number two, if you're ever interested in kind of getting ahead of the game or if you take your time reading a little bit or you need more, my Goodreads link is in our link tree. And I have a shelf linked right there for all of our podcast reads. And I always link them right in there so that you can see what we're reading and keep up with that. And that way, if you need more or you need to go back and see what we have done previously, you can do that too. And then of course, like if you are just wanting more of us for some fucking reason, you can look at, we have our TikTok, which Ariel takes care of. And then we have the Instagram that I take care of. And you can also always email we us. Ever we are <laughs> everywhere. Ed we're in your nightmares. We to what would nightmares are made you? out of? Yeah, instead of where dreams are made of. <laughs> what nightmares are made of? Anyway, this week on um, What Nightmares Are Made Out Of. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. We, we have, for our special episode this week, we have Koromare by Pepper Winters, which is part two of the duet that we read, which part one was Lunamare. And we left off on a cliffhanger, so... Yeah, Are and I know, no, and I know we're making a lot of jokes, but this book was really sad and I kind of need the need jokes to, survive. to literally function as a human being. This was dense. The topics and the material were dense as well as the books. It was, it was a lot. It was an emotional roller coaster, and we need to make it through. We're going to 
dive right in, just like Neri. <laughs> Fucking hate you. My literal first note before we even started the book was that fucking dedication, though. And I already knew from there that this book was going to destroy me. And if we all remember, I did not cry in the last book at all. No crying. Ariel cried through the first, like, 50% of that fucking book. I I probably cried at least, like, 70% of that book. I had nary a tear. I didn't actually I didn't mean to say that. This book is going to be punny, isn't it? We left off with Luna Mare on kind of a cliffhanger. Yeah. The, de- um, the dedication got me. And while Ariel cried in the last book, I bawled like a fucking baby in this book. Towards the no, end. I, I had so text- many tissues the whole time. And I texted her. I was like, dude, I just cried. And like, I just. These two books broke me. I cried Oof. lots. I, lots, lots, lots. They're. After the first set of tear went, which we will end up talking about, I just couldn't stop from there. And I just would like read something and I just like, like a fucking baby. I was sobbing. Yeah. If, so I wasn't you surprised. need an emotional read and you have just joined us just because you love us and uh, you have not read this book yet. Please go um, read it. This book is for you. It's, but just, it's a good book. It is. And just, just as, an emotion- and just as a warning, as a heads up before we really start delving into this, like it's sad when... A lot of shit happens, so just be prepared for that. And we are going to make jokes probably throughout it. And it has nothing to do with us trying to, like, poke fun or anything at the book at all because I loved the book. We just need to get through it. And we have really horrible coping mechanisms, which is humor. So here we are. We, we bring the balance. See, we do bring the, the balance. balance to the force. I'm sorry. That was a Star Wars joke. I'm done. Let's move on. Continue. Let's read about. So Lunamari left us off at kind of a cliffhanger. If you joined us for the Lunamari special, you might remember that Jack and Anna had walked in on Neri and Aslan and the room was torn apart and Aslan was on top of Neri and it was very obvious what was about to happen. But to Jack and Anna, it did not look good. And everyone can agree, it did not look good. And Jack started beating Aslan to a pulp, and Anna was calling the police. And it the book ended with Neri. Nobody would listen to her. She's trying to tell them it's not Aslan, but nobody's listening to her. And she took a lamp and hit her father over the head with it so that he would stop attacking Aslan so that Aslan could get free and pushed Aslan out the door. That is how we ended the last book. Starts off literally right where Luna Mari Luna Mari left, left off. off. I will say I found it a little odd, maybe just on a personal standpoint, that it just seemed to not go with the theme that we didn't begin with the older Narita talking to the reporters, Look. that the chapter that opened the book, it sandwiched Luna Mari. And, and it worked great like that. It picked up right where... Little Mari left off, and that was great. I was just surprised. I, I guess I was not prepared for that right when I opened the book. I was prepared to sit there and go through the old ladies doom, 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 doom all over again. And I mean, we didn't have to do that. We got an extra few minutes before we had to go through her foreboding baloney, but it picked up literally right where we left off. The police were walking into the room, they're trying to get an ambulance for Jack. Jack's refusing the ambulance. Narita's finally just able to get people to listen to her because she's just screaming over everybody. And she's like, I, this is not what's happening. And she finally is like, no, I will tell you literally everything. I will tell you who it was that raped me if you promise not to go after Aslan. I will go right with you to the police station right now. Let's go. It was crazy her- because because she's been holding this in for yeah, six months. Yeah, because she didn't want anybody to know. Mm-hmm. And I think her parents were still even a little skeptical at this point, but they could see that their daughter was like on such an edge and they just, uh-huh. everyone just piled in and went to the police station. Like I texted you yesterday, I know, I don't think the mom was skeptical because again, she kind of, she said it without saying all the details while she was at the house. And then her mom's mm. face was just, it dropped. 
realized that shit had seriously happened to her daughter. And then it just, it was, it was crazy. It was nice to see her finally admitting things just because, I mean, that really shows that this book is going to show a lot of growth with her because that was the big thing in towards the end of that last book that she just was in a spiral, spiral, spiral. Obviously we're going to get more doom, but it was nice that like finally we're, She's and admitting her stuff being out able loud. to admit it out loud to the police officers, and she even admits this was a huge healing point for her. But she also did it to save Aslan, and oh, it's absolutely. a huge. Well, no, she did not do it in the thought process of healing of her. for her, but in doing so, it was it became a huge. Yeah, but it also point that of. also becomes a huge theme throughout the book of them doing things to benefit the other in the end it's crazy i will say yeah so they go over all that but i will say i don't think that they ever mention it in the book because we were talking about the age thing in the last book they finally tell us she's 72 years old i wrote it down i was so like really it is yes so it's funny because i said the same thing and i was like yes they finally say so it's funny that you say that because i went back to my lunamare notes and i flipped back to what I calculated her age to be based on all the numbers that they gave us and the math I had to do. And it was right. Of course. And I was like, what are things that I need in my life? Because if it had been wrong, I would have like, ooh, that, that, those things bugged me so much. But we had calculated in the 70s, her, she was in her, when that, we last They said oh. it had been six decades since she pulled them out of the sea. So I said, well, she's at least 72. Yeah, but they never like, put an actual number on it so it was nice to like when she goes i'm a 72 year old woman and i was like there it is i was waiting for so the detective who interviewed her at the police station is a neighbor and a friend of her family and i bring this up because it's clear that throughout all this and throughout her giving the story he's not an idiot and he knows on some level what they've done and it brings me One of the lines I really enjoyed in the book, it's, he says to her, everyone is a murderer. You just need a good reason and a bad day. I love that line. I really was, it was crazy. It was great. So, but yeah, he, he knows more. So she refused to have her parents in the room. She didn't want to put them through having the actual details. Them knowing that she had been assaulted was bad enough she didn't even want them to know that in the beginning this was what all of this had been about so when she got out of the police station she had to have a conversation with them in the car and really be like no aslin has been helping me all along it has been him and her dad is so amazing and it was so nice because she finally was able to come clean about everything i did write in this prior to things happening that you know there were no more secrets no more secrets were kept except for the murder but that's besides the point but, but, and, but, but he wanted to make sure that they could all start together. Yeah, as a family, so it, right, it really no... kept with the character development we had of her parents from the previous book, how great her parents really are. Like, they are so loving of Neri, and it was just, it was really nice to see, but yeah, I... And they were like, oh, Jack. crap, we need to go find him now. <laughs> yes. So they all went in search of Aslan, who Aslan finally... He started running and he ran for hours and he's like, I can't do this. And we got his side of it. He's like, I can't. No, I, there's no life without her. I would rather go out trying to be with her kind of thing. And he turned back around and he was at the house. So they all met back up at the house. They all had excruciatingly long monologues with each other. It was fine. They weren't, they were great. Don't get me wrong. They were great. They were just for the beginning of the book. They were just super duper long and there was one point where um jack was like kind of giving him shit about well you don't you don't just des- you, you think you don't deserve to be here with us you think you Listen. don't deserve to be happy like yeah you made him feel that way you fucking idiot and you just beat him to a bloody pulp well and so the thing is is yes he did that but then aslan explains to him his entire past and then he kind of like Goes into right. the murder, or Nary's like, please all stop. Sitting, Nary- they're all sitting there, like, joking while he's sitting there, literally dying yeah. and in so much pain. And they all, oh, that's so funny. I didn't read it like that, but okay. They, Jack even made a joke about it. And I was like, 
funny. I think he's just trying to, to cope me, with the fact that he fucked up. Right. And on one side, I had that part where it's him coping. And on the other side, I kind of thought it was a little diggy because he was kind of almost like, well, you have been screwing my daughter behind my back kind of thing. Well, to be honest, if you are the father and you raised this boy since he was 16 until now and then found out that they've been fucking. No. Yeah, I, I would do the I, same I just, thing. I, I would react I the same way. I saw it from both sides. That's why yeah, I was like, you but, know. But the huge thing, he tells Jack all about his past because he's like, you know what? We're just going to lay everything out on the table because he doesn't feel worthy of Neri at all. Like he doesn't, but he right. wants to explain everything to him because mm-hmm. he wants everything out on the no table. No more and lies. He wants no more lies. Clean. And then mm-hmm. of course he gets into the murder and Neri's like, please stop. And he's not, he's either not taking the hint or he just doesn't give a shit. I couldn't decide which way it was going. I don't think it was that he didn't give a shit. I think he just felt that he it was it out. just so crucial for Jack to, to know. know. Yeah. So, and here's here's where I have highlights. And this is where I cried. This was the first instance of me crying. It was Jack's speech. He went into this huge speech, but like prior to it, he goes, you know, Aslan, for a guy who has an eidetic memory, you're so fucking stupid. Which, facts. And then, you know, he goes, you know, Neri never lost herself in you. You found yourself in her, which, fuck, that started me going. And I was like, oh, God. But this was the part that it just, he's like, because I hate to tell you, after that speech, after knowing what you've done for her, no one else will ever compare. I might as well throw her in a nunnery because if you don't take her off my hands, no one will. I'll forbid it. And I, like, died because obviously Aslan is, like, freaking out. He's like, This man is never going to let me be with his daughter after all of this shit that I have done. Like, I've murdered. My whole past is a shit fest. And he was basically going to go out in a blaze of glory. Exactly. And then I don't he wasn't expecting the fact that Jack is like, you murdered for her. I would have killed that dude. If you hadn't killed him, I would have. You're worthy of my daughter. His anger kind of subsided and he's like, I have seen and how you I have think been. at this point they were just so exhausted from the day and learning about everything that happened to Neri and it was just everything like you, this is our option like how can we it's not see just that? it's just crazy and then of course like the ending quote I have from that chapter was when he spoke to her in Latin because then he wants to propose and Jack's like, if that's a ring that you wanted to give to my daughter, do it now. And then he, you know, proposes to Neri and like there's an inscription on the inside of the ring. And the inscription also made me cry because, you know, it's it's in Latin, which, you know, Neri big into the into Latin because marine biology, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And she's like, what does that say? And her mom was like, it, it means by moonlight, I am yours. By sea, you are mine forever. And I bawled. I bawled. I, this chapter wrecked me and this was chapter four. Oh. It was rough, but I did text you and I said, I, I'm not going to lie. I kind of missed when there was drama. When, like, as we get further and, in. And I was like, Buck, buckle your seatbelt. I know. Well, it just, it got to the point where it started being so, and I get it. Right. And it, it has nothing to do with the book. I don't know why it was in my soul. It was so gaggy. And I'm like, mm. bro, the, like, all the love just so they, much yeah just, it was I, well, so and, much and, and i don't and I think get it. and normally you love all the gaggy i think it was just that these books so far has given us literally not as much us doom 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 and then it was just so many chapters of everything's fantastic all this lovey all this we're finally can be together now everything's grand but on that note everything's grand they're together now and zara shows up zara fuck zara okay. in a dish Okay, so it's funny. I literally wrote, Z shows up, can get fucked. They try to, like, recover that friendship, and they try to right. fix it. I still don't care. Fuck Zara I don't in care the either. Ass. And I want to say, I don't want to get ahead of myself, so I want to say why Zara's there. There because the police had contacted her boyfriend in regards to Ethan, who was the one who raped Neri. Because they were friends. And, and that's dead. how he was at the park. And Ara checked the cameras from that night and erased them because she saw everything. Aslan 
basically beating them up and yanking them and dragging them out of there. But Zara is distraught because she did not realize that that happened to Neri at the party. And yes, she was angry with her, but even though she was angry with her, she didn't want something like that to happen to her. And I did not I like- I had the biggest eye roll in this part. I'm I did be not honest. like how she kind of was like, well, my brother made me and threatened me and told me he wouldn't talk to me if I didn't know. I didn't Fuck know you, because bitch. obviously that wasn't the whole truth because Neri had that fear before she even broke up. So clearly there was some kind of underlying thought that that might occur prior due to her character. And she wouldn't and even hear Neri out like at all. No. And no. I don't give a shit. Like this whole thing, so, this whole thing pissed me off because she was so saying, she was, but, all, she was saying how like, but you were in the next room and I was screaming for, screaming you. for you. And mm -hmm. I don't care how fucking loud a party is. If you're in the next room, you hear that. I don't care. I'm still I mad guess it about depends. it. Now I can go get loud, fun. loud music. I can't literally hear anything. It's a, that's a true. thing, but not everybody's going to have weird I think that Zara things. wanted to not hear it, so she didn't feel she as want, guilty right. knowing it happened. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I think she knew. But I, I'm going to say, while Zara was over there groveling and wanting to rekindle, I was so happy that instead of Neri being just like, yeah, I'll call you sometime or something. No. She Neri told her fucking get stood her ground <laughs> and her and Aslan basically told her to go get fucked. The and I loved that that i did that too. was that was so good for my soul just saying. i did too the only the thing part. is aslan started to spiral because now he knows that someone he was else concerned knows. right that someone else knows and he was concerned about what he's always her telling about. and right but he's oh yeah he's always got shit like that in his head so not only that but zara got cooper to lie to the police and tell cooper's her boyfriend and ethan's semi-friend she got him to lie to the police and tell them that, yeah, he talked to him like a couple days country. later and he was on his way to go, yeah, to another country. So he kind of felt like Zara had a hold on him. And the, um, the big thing, too, is the fact that they pinged his phone and it was in the middle right. of the ocean. And that's how they know. And Cooper is huge into technology. So he, he fixed basically it. fixed it and did a whole bunch of stuff. It was crazy. And like, yes, great fantastic zara can still go fuck herself like i know this she is had, supposed to be like a redeeming... redemption to give she had re she had redemption to give that does not mean everything is forgiven and forgotten no because good sucks. do your penance great you deserve this happy shit. glory hallelujah fuck zara goodbye moving on so we get some doom lady time and present narita is basically telling us that we have two years of happiness until her whole world dies and her whole world is shattered forever. And that kind of gives us the timeline in the for chapters that the we're next. Reading. And I made a note of this saying that if I had to sum up these two books in four words, it would it would be foreboding, doom, doom, doom. Because every time we kind of get, like you said, those little sappy little chapters, present Narita is there to come right swoop right in and go and look that and i've noticed Sorry, too suckers. and i noticed too at a lot of the end of the chapters of the past there's ones few. there's yeah. a lot of foreshadowing as to what's going to happen i will say the section of the book with their two years had a lot mm -hmm. of banging lots of banging so let's dive into lots those two bang. years but here's the only so, thing i will say my only complaint about the banging besides other things and i have a weird thing with the age it's just because i don't I don't like to think about young ones banging. <laughs> was it young one banging? She's 18. Okay. I know. I'm uh -huh. aware. Anyways, because they said the word speared a lot. I speared her. Oh. I didn't like it. I was going to say, I don't know. I, I don't I don't... got that as much, but they must have changed over the rutting from the last book to the speared. Yeah, to, to the this speared. Book, and it, because oof. I didn't, I didn't get it. one rutting in this one. There was so no was rutting, happy. but there was a lot of speared. And I don't, I speared her. Honestly, it's a personal preference. It has, Nothing gotcha. to do with this book at all. Like, this book is fine. I just, and, my personal preference. And that was the, for the last one, there wasn't anything wrong with the word writing. It was just the fact that for how well written the book was, we used the same descriptive word. Well, the same the descriptive whole... word on this one was speared. So, you're but wrong. it was throughout the whole book. Like, uh, it's every throughout chapter. like the back half of the book when they start gotcha. banging a no. lot. So, after we get our two year 
deadline. That is when things go topsy-turvy next. The next two years that we get aren't bad. They kind of are lulled in a complacent kind of happiness. They move to Townsville. Mary starts school. And her dad's Adeline, the one who got them the apartment. It's kind of... Yep. Through the connection of her father and his friend who owns their apartment, Aslan gets to be kind of the manager of the building. He is renovating the apartments, doing the books for him. He's getting use his brain and getting to learn new stuff and keeping busy while Mary's in school. They're having the time of their lives on their own in Townsville, away from regular life, their parents, everything's going great. They're happy as can be until towards the end of the two years, Aslan gets a call and Narita gets stung by, I'm going to butcher this and I should have looked up how to say this correctly. Glaucus Atlant, it's a blue sea dragon or a blue, mm -hmm. um, it's a venomous animal that it, it really got her good. She's in the hospital it was touch and go because these things can be fatal. So yes. Aslan rightfully is losing his mind. He should not have gone to the hospital, but he does. But thankfully, Neri's okay. He brings her home. They just have to take it easy for a while. He is spiraling yet again, though, because it just shows him another way he could lose her and another way of how he... Like, risked so much getting to the hospital. Mm -hmm. and, and and he also realized how much he will risk for her and, and yeah. vice versa. It was, it was crazy. Side note, that has nothing to do yeah. with the book for a second. Kind mm -hmm. of. Do you know yep. what the name Townsville reminds me of? Half like Pet Village or something? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure their town name is Townsville. I think, isn't that Townsville? That's funny. I'm like, wait, wait a second. It only just... Awesome. It literally only just clicked right now. And that's all I thought Sugar, of. Sugar, spice, everything, everything nice. nice. These are the ingredients. Oh my God, we need to stop. I that's also want to say. That's what you would just say. Oh, and, and then a uh, side note off of that. At the time, and thank God I ended up being wrong. I had a weird feeling about Griffin. I was like, I don't know. I have a weird feel. Because like he, he did accept the fact that Aslan... Like, he didn't ask questions. Was undocumented. Right. He, he's like, I, I don't want to know. I thought he was a good, I actually, I didn't have a bad feeling about him. I had a good, I, I felt like Wayne, the detective who interviewed mm -hmm. her in the beginning, I felt like he knew more than he let on. And I just, he was okay with it. The book made me not trust anybody. Oh. And oh. so I had a really bad sense of trust and I was like, something bad's going to happen. Mm -mm. Because I knew that the two years was coming up and this was thrown yeah, into, this was thrown into the two years and I was like, Bruh. Oh yeah. No, I, I didn't nope. I didn't get that from him. I didn't I get had that trust issues. Him. I had trust issues yeah. and I was like, Well, I'm glad you. that you were wrong because <laughs> I liked him. So I'm glad you were wrong. I liked him um, too. I just I was <laughs> I but that's the problem is like I'll be like, Oh, I kinda like this person and then never yeah, mind. No, I didn't get that. Never vibe. mind. I had trust um, issues. But so during the two years of bliss, they really established even more relationships with honey. And her boyfriend, Billy, and Honey's brother, Teddy, and, and Eddie. his boyfriend, Eddie. Teddy oh, my God. Eddie. First uh -huh. of all, Teddy and, and they, Eddie they became, love them. Uh -huh. and they became their own little, like, friend group. And it was so cute. And it was Aslan's, like, first, like, real, like, friends. And it was really nice. And I really, really liked that addition. They were kind of just discussing Lunamare more. And that was just peppered in there. And I liked that. But here comes my first issue I had with this story. Throughout the entire Lunamare, Narita was called many things. Most of the time, it was Narita or Neri, but never, not one single time in the entire first part of this duet was she referred to as me. Oh, yeah. And yet, during this book, Everyone and their brother and their mother started throwing in, calling her knee as in, as if that was what they always referred to her as. And it got to a point where I literally wrote down, stop trying to make fetch happen because it's not going to happen. He didn't even clock that. It didn't bother me at all. But like you said, it, like we had different It would not have bothered me if she had been referred to that any, like even once in the last book would have been enough that it would not have bothered me. But it was like, 
why are you all of a sudden giving her a nickname in just this part of the book? Because it's one whole story. It just, it seemed incohesive to me. Unless somewhere within those two years of her talking to them, it became that they called her knee. I don't nope, know. Because okay. Zara called her knee. Oh. Her, I think her parents at one point called her knee. Everyone and their mother, brother, sister, aunts, best friends, butchers, bakery lady called her fucking knee at one point. I was like, okay. we're not making fetch happen over here. I was just, well, if Aslan called her that, I was going to throw my freaking Kindle. Ariel had a problem with knee. I, I had a problem with care oh, I had a problem with about spear. the name here we are. itself. I didn't care about I the know. name itself. I didn't, I just didn't like the lack of cohesiveness. So that part didn't bother me. Mo- moving I on. I didn't even, so, I honestly didn't even notice. I was just reading it. Lovely 72 year old lady comes back to tell us that our two years are up. Now, Poor Margo is like shitting herself over here. Like she is not doing well. Margo is not doing well, which is funny because it's this point that I wrote down. I was like, why am I just now wondering if kids were ever a thing for them and why no one has ever asked if they have children? That I have that written down at this part because I realized in the interview that they're talking about her life and talking about this, that, and the next thing, but nobody has once asked. So it, it would have been a piece that would have helped us along the way. But I felt like it was omitted purposely or not. You know what I mean? That's, oh, for that sure. For I, was... I honestly, for like this future moments, I think it right. was important to because she was more focused on the love of her and Aslan. And I'm going to be honest. Oh, and we're going to get to that. Oh, good. Because I have a problem with that, too. Anyways, that's besides the point. The time comes. <laughs> when the time comes. When oh, the I... time comes. <laughs> Anywho. So. Her 20th birthday. Like you said, Margot is already. And this is like 10% of the way through the book. Yeah. All of this Um, has happened and there's still a lot more book. And not only that, but this is when the font starts to change with the mood. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Why are you doing that? Why are you changing the font to be bigger and scarier? We don't need that extra. It's big and scary enough. We don't need more to try to wreck my soul. I showed that to Spencer and I was like, baby, the next part of this book is going to wreck my soul even more. And I'm not very far into this. There was one typo and this was an arc. So it doesn't count against anything because that's how it rolls. And I'm sure it's probably been fixed by now. It's literally two letters in the middle of a word were accidentally flip flopped. So there was an accidental typo. It's so insignificant because the word is still there. Just the letters were. I think that's probably why I didn't catch it because Because you just glossed over the word in your brain just fixed it to the right thing. Right. Well, we get present Narita telling us it's time for the doom. Our two years are up. It's time. It's time. I don't want so, it. no, I don't want it either. Yeah, I don't want it. You can't make me. So it's Neri's 20th birthday. It's Neri's 20th birthday. You all don't want to be sad. Too fucking bad. Aslan is stoked. But the chapter even starts with like, if I knew this was going to be my last day, I would have done it differently. And I was like, I was that. I was not okay. The start of this. I was like bawling through this whole chapter. Like God. straight up fucking falling like all right i don't want to be the mean spoiler lady but i also want to tell you where my head was at to help cope myself through this so that maybe it can give you a nugget of coping as well in the beginning of this book there are is a warning page that tells you like what is like what is in this book it's not really a trigger warning necessarily but there are there's a few things and Two of those things that are listed is torture and murder, I think. So I knew my pea brain was able to cope me through this next bit. So I hope it helps you too, that even though all of this is happening, I knew it would not be the last time that Aslan would be shown for us because we would still have to have him be tortured at least. So. If that is helpful to you, grab it. Prepare yourself it. for that. Or if you're me, just go in a blind. Because don't go. worry. I that's that's how can. I rolled. I was anxious reading this entire thing. They've built everything up to be such foreboding and such bad stuff. When it starts saying like 
I had known that this would be the last time. And I'm like, oh, God. And I was anxious mm -hmm. through the entire situation. And, of course, I wrote, you know, it's her 20th birthday. Something bad is about to happen. And yep. the fact that they talk about the fact that the dress that she wore. Is the oh, hold on. Yeah. So when Aslan started this chapter, it's Neri's 20th birthday. And he explains that there were three things that would happen until his demise. There was only three things that we would get through until it was almost like present day Neri's doom for us. This was Aslan's version of that, where it was instead of telling us like, oh, two years until this, he was telling us these three things that he was going to do for Neri were the last things he was going to do for Neri. And we had to get through that. And then we would have that. So the first thing on the list was the lazy morning in bed. They ate, they had their schmexy times. They enjoyed themselves. They never usually get a lazy morning in. He wanted to do that for her on her birthday. They did their thing. Then they were going to leave for the day and she got dressed. It ended up being that, and this is where I knew shit was going to go real south because mm -hmm. she got an exact replica of the dress she wore the night everything with Ethan happened. And, you know, the dress ended up getting... It was her it. favorite dress prior to that. And it so was his favorite dress I that she wore prior I understand to that. she wanted to put a like new... reclaim it. Claim it and do all that stuff. But as soon as they said that dress from that night, I was like... I was like, well, mm, here we are. This bad, bad omen. This dress is the bad omen. That's the thing. And it does get brought up again later about it still being a bad omen. Later on, we'll yeah. get to there. But to start it with the that. Worst times in her life uh, are wearing fuck. this dress. Yeah, and bad. Of course. Like, why do that to us? Why are you putting a sack in a dress? Anyways, so he takes her to a tattoo studio. Did you get to see the tattoo, to, by the way? To surprise her and get her a tattoo that he had created for her. And she was like, well, if I'm getting it, you need to get it too. So they get it together. And I'm over here like, bitches, where's this tattoo? I want to see it. At the I'm end. sitting here like frothing at the mouth. Like, where is this? I, I almost like. They just described it too pretty well. They described it really well. Mm -hmm. I'm over here almost hit up Pepper like halfway through. The, like, we're only like 25% of this book. And I'm like, where is the damn tattoo, lady? No, I didn't do that because I was like, I have patience. Maybe it will come. And I'm glad I had patience because it is at the end. So yeah. they link it at the end. You shall see there too. are some also like besides the main tattoo, there's some other drawings like attached into it. And I kind of really like want one of them because they're really cool. I will make sure that I put the picture of the tattoo into the Instagram so everyone can see oh, it. Oh, good. Yeah, so good you call. guys can, can see what yeah. it looks like. So, so, you know, especially if you haven't read the book or if you read it and then forgot to click the link to see it because some people just don't click links. And it, you didn't even have you to click have the link. To. But you can see it in the book without the, the watermark. But yeah, because it's watermarked in the link. So yeah. I just thought, you know, people want to. But I'll, but yes, I'll, put, it in it. I'll cool. put it on Instagram so everyone can see it. Yeah. And uh, we'll link it if you want to check out the other. Um, yes. Yeah, I'll put the link in there. So as well. Anywho, getting back on track. So that was number two on the list was the tattoo. Fantastic. The tattoo is very important to them. And it creates a permanent mark on their body that is more than just putting a ring on her finger can do. Considering and they can't even, get married. Right. And he even kind of makes a big deal out of it. He's like, it's like the men in your books when they like brand into their women or something. This is me branding you. Or it was, it was just really oh, cute. Yeah. So stop number three or item number three on the birthday agenda that he had planned for her was dinner. And they had a beautiful dinner. They basically had to be kicked out by the wait staff because they way overstayed their, their dinner welcome. They were enjoying themselves so much. They were done for the night. They had drinks. They had food. They tried so many things. They just were having the best time. And they were anxious to get home to enjoy each other some more. And so they ordered to get them there. And they're outside waiting for this Uber. And the Uber is taking forever. It keeps giving random times like, oh, now it's five minutes away. Oh, now it's 10 minutes away. Now it's nine minutes away. Now it's 15 minutes away. And it keeps changing. And they're just sitting there, standing against the building of the restaurant. And all the employees have gone home at this point because they've just been standing there waiting. And it comes to a point where they're like, we could just walk home at this point. And then 
four drunken idiots stumble upon them. Here's the doom. These... If you're curious, this is sad. This ruined my soul a little bit. So Neri's dressed up to the nines. She looks fabulous. The drunken idiots clock her immediately and start like kind of catcalling her type of deal. And then they start picking in on Aslan. And they're basically kind of like racist pricks. They were drunk. Yeah. Profiling him. They were basically like, oh, you're obviously a foreigner. You're obviously from around here. You don't deserve her. You should go back to where you came from. Blah, 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 blah. And Aslan's doing the absolute best he can to stay calm and quiet in the situation because he knows what's when at he's sna- when And when he snaps, he snaps. Like, that's the thing. Is right. Like- but he, he knows, also knows what's at stake and he knows that confrontation is not something that he can afford. But Neri does not her understand tips. that. Yeah, she doesn't understand that concept because she hasn't been forced to understand that concept, like due to her life and her privilege. So she's running her mouth. And to be honest, I mean, be me. I mean, right. Like, and so it's just getting them going even more and it gets to the point where they like grab at her and Aslan has to stop them and then all hell breaks loose because Aslan is so pissed off that he slips and he says something in Turkish and then boom so they start fighting it's four on one but one breaks off and tries to like attack Neri but the three aren't doing so well, so thankfully he kind of leaves Neri alone so that he can go back and help his friends because Aslan is kicking ass and taking names, but he's taking a lot of damage himself. And he's at the point where he's got three of them down and it's just one gigantic one left and he is not doing well. He has pushed any pain he might have aside because he has got to save Neri. He has got to get them home because that guy on Neri was like, a trigger for him and he was he's gonna push past everything he can to take down these guys and finally the uber guy is close by neri gets an alert he's pulling up she can see him coming down the street neri goes to stop aslan from engaging with the last guy she's like our our uber's coming we can go we can go let's just let's go let's go let's go and she distracts him and he for a minute that seems to work out like that because the guy He's like, yeah, fuck this. I'm done because he looks around and sees all his friends defeated. But then Aslan turns his back to leave and he spots an opportunity. And he's like, I don't fucking think so. And he fucking hauls ass running start and just pushes up, shoves with all he can Aslan right into the street, into the oncoming Uber car. And then the Uber hits him hard real hard aslan goes flying into all the the glass and the debris of the the car hitting him he, there's blood everywhere things are not going well he's not moving it doesn't look like he's breathing neri is just going crazy the uber guy who's obviously impaired is losing so I, his mind i'm wondering if that's why it took him so long that's kind of what was stated that he was obviously like high and he was kind of just like going around so He's freaking out. He's like, I need to call an ambulance. I'm not going to be responsible for killing somebody. I don't want to um, go to jail. Neri- I don't want to go to jail. Right. Like, And Neri's like, you can't do that. He can't go to the hospital. No, no. And at this point, she thinks he's dead because he is not moving. And she's just screaming for him, screaming his name. She even full names him. And she is so in shock and so distraught that when... The ambulance does show up. She's basically incoherent. She's in shock. And the ambulance takes them both. Yeah, they take them both. Um, That whole scene was so heartbreaking because, like, you just, she is so soulable, so incoherent, so just devastated as to the love of her life just get hit by a fucking car. And she she thinks, yeah. yeah. But she's like, you can't be dead. You can't be dead. Please come back to me. Mm -hmm. You can't be dead. And then, of course, like, all at the same time, like, I can't. At the same time time she knows that if he gets into that ambulance he's dead exactly so it's just it's so it's either way it was so rough mm-hmm. it was really rough he gets the ambulance she's inconsolable she's in shock she passes out 
So she is in the hospital. She wakes up to Jetta. Jada? Jetta? I don't know how to pronounce it. I want to butcher someone else's name now. Well, here we are. And uh, who she knows is it's a family friend. And that's the nurse that originally took care of Aslan, who they brought Aslan to when they found him shipwrecked when he was 16. And she was very surprised to see her. She's like, I didn't know you were here. And then they have their old crap moment, like Aslan's here. And Jada is like, don't say anything. I will see what I can do to help him. Just you can't be here. And, you, can't you know, she anything. kept saying, like, he's not saying his name. He's refusing to answer questions. So, like, he's right. doing it. So she needs to say nothing. Do the same. Yeah. Exactly. So Aslan is in and out of consciousness. He is really roughly banged up. And, I mean, he literally just got beaten to a pulp and then run over by a car. He is not doing well. But he can't stay in the hospital. So Jada is able to through the help of Jack coming and giving him clothes and whatnot, she's able to get him clothed and trying to kind of smuggle him out of the hospital. She can only get him so far. He has to walk the rest of the way out of the hospital on his own, and he has to meet Jack outside. And this motherfucker has, like, a broken hip. He has a broken hip. He has... Oh, he has a lot, most but the broken his, hip was just... Ribs. It, it, yeah, he's busted. So he gets outside. He is doing everything he can to fight for him and Neri and their life. And he's determined. And he gets outside. He sees Jack. It's within his reach. And then he's surrounded. Yeah. Because the damn Uber driver remembered Neri screaming his name and was ever so helpful to the police when giving all the descriptions of everything. Yeah. It sucks and... because, like, I don't want to hate on the Uber driver. Granted, yes, he did hit him. He did fuck up. But I know he was trying to do the right thing do the right thing and he should have been there to begin with like well yeah he shouldn't have been impaired but here Mm -hmm. we are but he was like trying to to i know right he didn't know he was doing wrong right so it's still like so he is what we just we are where we are i'm just giving i was so pissed because like i'm reading and i'm like yeah jack's right there like i know something bad's gonna happen but like maybe it won't happen right now Maybe I was in such denial that this shit was going to happen. And yeah, they... Aslan's biological father, who we knew from the first book, has been hunting for him for a very long time, got wind that that's where he was, sent the people after him, and there he goes. So he gets picked up at the hospital, detained, and sent back to Turkey, and delivered right into the palms of his hands of his father. I had mixed feelings on his father. It was very confusing. Yeah, so I was really we'll confused. Get... I, I just, I, I had mixed feelings. We'll get, we'll get to Mr. Kara. So poor Jack has to go home empty handed to a distraught Neri. And it's, it's sad. It's heartbreaking. Everything she is, is awful. like inconsolable, like screaming. And it's, mm-hmm. it's bad. It was bad. So when Aslan gets to Turkey, on his way out of the airport, he's able to get a phone. And it's almost like his dad's toying with him. I shouldn't call him his dad, but like, I don't know. How, is it Sem or Kem? I was, I was saying I was, Sem in my head. I was going Kem Kara just to keep the. I was saying Sem Kara so it wasn't um, too hard of the. Uh, I was, but... I, the only reason I was doing Kem Kara is for alliteration purposes in my brain. Gotcha. Mr. For Kara some. was, <laughs> Mr. Douche Nugget was toying with him and was seeing what he was doing and he finally got a phone and was able to call Neri and I was sent to Turkey and Neri's on the phone with him distraught like they're trying to make a plan on how they can be together meet, how they can how they can smug snuggle smug, snuggle smuggle how they can <laughs> smuggle out and meet in a different country and bloody blah, blah when Neri hears a pop and then three pops pop, Mr. Pop, pop. One, one pop. She later says pop, pop, pop. She's saying it because it's reverberating in her oh, brain over oh. and over again. There's yeah, a theme of one. three. So that's the only reason I said that is because like I noticed it. Like, I thought that there was three pops. I heard the only one pop at the beginning, but every time she repeated it, it was always pop, pop, pop. And then pop, oh, pop, Oh, it was just, yeah, reverberating. I don't, I didn't notice that it was three every time she repeated it, but uh, it was just I have another her brain kind of reverberating about that i did not notice that it was three but anywho 
And so she's on the phone and she hears the pop. And next thing she knows, the next person on the phone is his biological father. And he tells her that he has just killed him and that he is dead. And she's like, you're lying. He goes, I shot him myself. Like, like it just. It's done. And he hangs <laughs> up and she screams and screams for hours she cannot they cannot get her to stop screaming and this is when they have to sedate her to get her to stop and this is where they throw in the little tiny nugget of when she's fading out from the doctor yes and this is where we learn someone named neri is pregnant because all you hear is it kind of like hinted at it before she went out but they're like did you know she and then like she's still just screaming and Mm -hmm. screaming screaming and then they finally, as she was going under, was like, did you know that she was pregnant? And I was like, ah, this is just going to get more sad. Because again, like, and then because my thought process until I read the next chapter, before I continued and Neri talked about the daughter, I was like, shit, we haven't talked about this kid at all in the last book. At all so far in this book, this kid's got to be dead. Mm-hmm. Like, in my brain, I was like, there's. I'm like, they're going to destroy me even further by either she loses the baby or the kid is dead at this point. Because up until here, until the next chapter and they explain everything, we don't know anything about the kid. We know nothing about this kid. My brain was like, dude, please don't do this to me because I'm already having a hard time. Can we not murder the child? <laughs> so we we have nothing. We don't know anything. It goes back to present day Narita and she kind of helps us a little bit in that point and is like lets us know that she's okay and lets us know Yeah, because they ask so we don't have to wonder for long no that's Um, what i'm saying like up until i read that chapter and i didn't know and then thank god that they explain which was great yeah so yes we learned that she's pregnant we've learned that even though they were diligent about not having an accident like that happen Um, when she got stung that all the antibiotics that she was on for so long that affected her birth control and they were not careful so the next chunk of the book is in neri's point of view and it encompasses the next five years of her life god and the struggle that she has coping with the thought of Aslan being gone, but also feeling like he's not, the not wanting to live without him, but not feeling like she can just die when she has this peace to take care of his daughter that he left behind, Isla. And she has said multiple times that if it wasn't for Isla, that she would have have succumbed and not been there any longer. Mm -hmm. She kind of anchored her. And we have a lot of in and outs of her despair and lost qualities because she, even though five years, she is still in the grips of mourning without really even mourning that she has been this whole time because she still feels this connection with him that she is so convinced that she, he could not possibly be gone because she would feel it. And when, Mr. Kara, I'm going to call him that because I'm not going to butcher his name. Mr. Kara took over that phone after he presumably shot Aslan. He even said he would keep the phone if she ever wanted to call him because he was like her father-in-law and their family and blah, blah, blah. And she can't help herself. And every year on the anniversary of... At the exact time as well. On the anniversary of that original call of what Mr. Kara said was him killing Aslan, she calls him and basically demands him back and demands him to tell her the truth because she can feel that he is not dead and demands that he tell her that he's not dead. And every year, Mr. Kara is resolute and being like, nope. I'll send you his ashes. I'll send you his bones. I'll do this. I'll do that. And he slips up at one point. Yes. He's very careful in how he words it. And he always says that Aslan. Yeah, I can't. I can't pronounce the name either. Avsi. Avchi. Avsi. 
Abs- I don't Someone know. will tell us, I hope. Someone will tell us and we'll screw it up. Please tell Wait us. Wait for the audio so book. I even wrote it in my notes and I had messaged you. And I said, here's my theory. He mm-hmm. very, very specifically says Aslan A. I can't pronounce his name. Abs- I'm going to say Absi. I don't know. We'll Ab- figure it out. Ablin? Anyways, Absi. he very, very, very much specifies that he is dead. But I wrote, but he what never, about? Even I'm though like, he is very, about- very specific. That his son is Aslan Kara. Is it Kara? Why? Because Kem Kara and then Kara, Kara, whatever. Yeah. So even though he's very specific, that's his child. He never says that Aslan Kara is Kara's dead. So that was that kind of, and she even picked up on it, I think in the fourth year. And she kind of called him out on that. And she was like, but what about Aslan Kara? Is he dead? And he tells her that she's too clever for her own good and hangs up on her. The other thing is she had picked up on how when they were talking, he had said that he would send her his ashes because he he burned him. Mm-hmm. But then he says, I'll send you the bones. And she goes, I thought you said that he was ashes. Something, right. Yeah. And, and he then goes, yeah. he toys with her regarding Isla. And Ugh. she kind of gives him information because she's trying so hard. She's like, you know, you can't hate him because you say that he's not your son, but do you know what your son has done? Like, and she gives him mm-hmm. this information about like him about like, murdering. Him murdering Ethan and his math skills and all this stuff that would connect the two of them on a, a core level. And she's like, you really going to just take all that away kind of thing when you don't even know him and all this stuff but he really toys with her he toys with isla and it's just it's five years of her suffering he even makes many mentions on their phone calls of like you are killing yourself because you can't stop this but they're connected she can feel it and there's nothing he can do to stop that In the background during all of this, she and Isla are living with Teddy and Eddie. We're always going to say like that, Teddy and Eddie. And they are working on Lunamare. They're working diligently on it. And it between Lunamare and Isla, it's keeping her alive barely. Mm -hmm. So then, then we get present Neri again, who, it's it's almost kind of funny because she's a little snarky about it all and she's kind of like in her own little like well you didn't ask me that either kind of thing because the reporters pick up on what she said about the our uh the last name mm-hmm. switch rooney and she goes technically <laughs> right and she talks about the heart palpitations that she's been having and or that that neri had been having during those five years and and that she kept a journal because the, the the cardiologist had recommended that she keeps track of all of the spikes and everything because they could not find a reason for her to be having heart problems other than the stress and the mourning. And she kind of gets a little a little snarky with the reporters and is like, I proved it exists with that. Mm-hmm. And this was the point where they were kind of like, mm, excuse me, kind of thing. Yeah. And she goes, well, in three months, everything would be proven because I would have both sides to evenly line up upon Aslan's return kind of thing. And I was like, yes. And I, like, and she, I will say prior to that, she went to Turkey. Anniversary. Yes. Right. The first anniversary. And it was obviously... Prior to what we're going to get into, the rest of the thing, Teddy and Eddie came to her with adoption papers. They knew she would say no. I didn't like that. I get it. So, okay. I didn't. I didn't. I understand their thought process because she literally could not be present to parent this kid. And she was going to go. They wanted to give her the freedom to try to fight for him and find him. And they knew that the only thing holding her back was Isla. Yes. And so I have problems with this later on too, but that's besides the point. It kind of prefaces things that like happen later on, but I just, 
for me, originally it came out of nowhere. And then I was like, I mean, it makes sense. I think that they knew she was going to do it at some point either way. And they wanted her daughter to be protected. And they knew right. that Neri kind of gets a little self-destructive. And I don't think they were trying to take anything away no. rights-wise from Neri. They were just trying to additionally add on theirs, which we'll talk about later on because it comes back up again. As an American reading this, it doesn't make as much sense to us due to our legal systems. So they just must be different there. So we'll we'll talk about that when it comes back around because I, I have things to say too. But I got a little overexcited because President Narita's chapter ends with like, and I saw him there mm -hmm. at the house. Like, like, you know what I mean? And I thought that's where it was going to pick up. So I was like, I'm ready for this, bitch. Like, hear the Taylor Swift, like, are you ready for it song? Like, even the, like, knew he was a killer. Like, all that, everything was, like, lining up perfectly. I was like, bitches, I am ready for this. Like, Ben's a blazing. He's going to walk in on a blaze of glory to this song and, like, bring it to me. I am going to nom this shit up, like, fucking no, no tomorrow. And then that did not happen. So. Um, not yet. It was anticlimactic had an issue and it's just a me thing and then like now thinking about it it makes sense but okay bear with me here in the last book all of narita's chapters were written as you talk about the thing that i had an issue with next entirely possible and then of course i got all the ages this book none of her chapters started with present except for this fucking aslan chapter it said present day so i said finally getting present aslan and then i said maybe and then i started reading it i was like why does this say present, but this is from five years ago? What is the so, fuck is happening? So I guess because when, all her present It wasn't from five years ago. It so it starts it, it said, starts at five years. Oh, five years after it, whatever. Yeah. After. Like, That's what I meant. So okay. I, I'm, I glad understood that I'm not the it only one. Once I read it, but I was I was a little testy about it. So I had the same feelings. Because at first I was like, Ass, we're finally gonna hear from Aslan in the present, bitches. And I was all gung-ho and excited. I was like, okay, this will take away from my big flop Taylor Swift moment. And then it started in the same exact timeline of past. Mm -hmm. And I got really confused. Mm -hmm. And not confused, confused, because I understood what was but going it's on. But it's just, just it's labeled as. With that label. Yes. And it took me until the next chapter where he went back to that particular age when he was taken originally mm -hmm. and it became his toggle of his past and present just like we have toggle of her past and present they're just separate timelines i did i i did because, not either i wish it because... i wish it had given his age instead of saying present because to us present is when Neri's 72. And that's the thing, because I think even with right. Aslan's chapters, were they ever labeled I with I felt like age? it would have been just as effective if it had his age, his age. on there or whatever. But Because I don't remember. I understood what was trying to be accomplished and giving that separate toggle. But it just, in, the context, in the context but, of the books what we've been pushed this whole entire I, time right i don't like okay this is the present but then how is this i don't right that's I, the thing I understand is now they're... we have two separate timelines and that that's i was like mm -hmm. so <laughs> here's the thing too is because i believe in lunamar they were all labeled like ages unless it was present and then it was labeled as present it was present day narrate right. And it did and then not it, say present. In this one, right. I don't think her present day chapters were labeled as present at all. No. Now that I think about that. And then her None ages, of them were in the last right. ones either. But then they were, I thought they were. Oh, no, they weren't. You're right. You're right. You're right. But they were, but anyways, but, but all the past ones were labeled with their age. Were labeled by age. No, but right. this, but this also feeds into what I had an issue with in the last book with the past chapters reading towards the end as present thoughts like you know how Neri's like and then this was going to happen but then some of Aslan's chapters in the, the past the, were like if I had known the, that this was going to shadow yeah so I had an issue with that in the last book where they'd be like they were clearly in the past and then like not all the time but occasionally it would be foreshadowing like if I knew that but this we was have to happen. remember that this entire story 
even though they're labeled as this person, this person, even though they're labeled as this age and this age, this entire story is being told by an old lady. I understand the that. That's the but only I'm, reason I kind of had a but I'm saying my ass about labeling it as present because of the fact that they were Aslan's chapters at the time that were in the past. They were saying so. I didn't have I an can, issue with the foreshadowing but I, but because I, of that reason, right? But in my brain, because it's reading as Aslan's, if I had known right. that this is what was going to happen, that's what I had an issue with in the last book is the the mixing of present and past. And so yeah. this being labeled as present, I had the same thought you did. I'm like, oh, shit, we're going to finally get Aslan in the yeah. present. And then I it not actually being in the present. The concept, kind of... and I understood the giving them their separate, ta- their separate toggles. I understood it. It didn't Personal fit with, I it didn't just like it. didn't fit with how the book has been written so far and how both of the books have been written so far that they haven't labeled it as present unless it's physically actually. It was it actually didn't, the only chapter in both books that was labeled And, it's, and that's it. And that's it. And right. so it was, it wasn't it was how, odd, but yeah, it was just an odd yeah. choice, but that was, I'm glad that I wasn't the only one who had a problem with I, that. I thought it, I just, it was not my personal preference. No, I wish it would have just stuck with the age instead of. So. Anyways, now sorry. we begin Aslan's toggle of back and forth, like we've been getting Nerys. And now we get to find out how five years have been Aslan. for Aslan. Which, and spoiler we alert, Aslan's not great. Five years. <laughs> spoiler alert, not awesome. And we learn right away because we start out at the top of the five years and not going back just yet that he's basically a yes man conditioned shell of kind of on the outside we learn that he is not doing so great his body is riddled with scars and wounds and he is missing half his leg mm-hmm. we can see the damage that the last five years has done but we know that obviously he's not dead so sweet deal so that's when it goes into the past and we learn about the past five years that pop that she heard was a pop from a tranquilizer gun the tranquilizer had an awful reaction with him it basically decayed his leg instead of letting him heal like he should mr Carr was all gung-ho to get him started in his conditioning and it just made it worse to the point where that part of his leg had to be removed or he was going to die he basically gave him a choice of we can do this the easy way or we can do this the hard way and but you will submit to me either way there are three things you have to do to submit to me and you can do it now or you can do it when I'm done with you, but it's going to happen. You must kill someone, you must rape someone, and you must traffic someone. And Maslin's like, no fucking way. Do your worst, bitch. I'm done. And so thus begins five years of torture. And we get, he's basically strapping him into this for lack of a better term, it's like electric shock chair. And he's shocking him every parts of his body. He's doing all kinds of nasty things to him to break him and destroy to try to end. And Aslan has a really hard time because it's very an effective tool, but Aslan's just grounding himself. I mean, he's strapped in there and he can see his arms and he's drowning himself with his tattoo and he's using that to stay present. And we get the same anniversaries on the opposite end with Aslan as we did with Neri and and the phone calls that transpire and how Aslan's biological father reacts to them in terms to Aslan. And after he learns that he has been lying about the numbers thing and that he's not so far from him after all, if he's murdered someone and all this stuff and also keeping a very, very big piece away from Aslan, which was Oh, about... absolutely. But he's toying with him. Mm-hmm. And he's kind of letting him know that he has access to Neri. And he is talking with her. And that is really killing Aslan slowly. By year three, Mr. Kara is very frustrated. It has never taken this long to break someone. He doesn't understand what's taking him so long. He's basically been electrocuting and stabbing and taking pieces from his own child for three years now and he is not broken yet yeah and he can't figure out what he's using to ground himself 
until he does. And then he has his tattoo literally cut off of him. So um, that and he can remove the one piece that is keeping him from fully submitting and accepting him as his father. And it's just, mm-hmm. it was fucking rough. Yeah. And that's kind of that next session that they have. Aslan just doesn't have much to hold on to anymore. And he's just like, fine, whatever you want. I'll do literally whatever you want. So then he spends the next year behind the scenes being a yes man, basically not being fully trusted, but being put to the test on many things, being told to like kill people and different things. And then he's brought to, for lack of a better terms, like brothel. Yeah, I was, but it's, it is, but it isn't. It's like a trafficking a, a house. house. Yeah. I was going to say it's a trafficking house. And there's a there's one girl who's not performing and they put him to the test. And it's a room that's wired up with all kinds of mirrors and cameras and all this stuff. And Aslan's like, you know, help me and I can help you out of here. Like, we need to pretend we make, need to make this look good. He knows he's not going to perform. He, yeah. it, he knows he can't. It's not Neri. He's learned that already. Plus, his body's not in a position. He's he's not doing well. Then he realizes that the performance isn't going as well as he's hoping. So then he gets a different idea. And he's like, see, I'm just like you. I can't do it either. I will never sire a child. I can never do it too. Because he's saying that to try to connect on some level and get to his father. Because one of the reasons his father has been so obsessed with him is because after he was taken as a baby, his father was shot right in the crotch and he right in the lost day. and he lost all of those goods. So he has not been able to have any more children. He's not been able to uh, do anything fun. So he's grandstanding. He's making this huge thing with his like limp noodle out for show for everyone. And uh, Mr. Carr quickly grabs him and whisks him away. And he's like, no. I got the girl to do what you wanted. I, I got her to behave. I told her that she'd be good. You can set her free, right? Because, and he's like, yep. And he shoots her. Mm-hmm. So this part of the story is important because come to find out that girl was an undercover agent. So that was the demise of Aslan's dad. And months later, after they did kind of like an initiation, I guess, for lack of a better term, for Aslan getting all of the higher ups to come and swear their allegiance to him as second in command if anything were to happen to the evil Kendall. If anything were to happen to him, you know, they were swearing their allegiance to Aslan to be in charge. That was the grand moment. And so after that happened and the thing happened, they kind of got into an argument and his dad was like, I know you can sire a child. I know you're lying. He's like, no, Mary and I couldn't either. Nobody, I've never been able to. And And then like, also, that's a lie. The murdering and stuff too. Like he says, I know you killed somebody. That was the, that was back years ago. Yeah. Well, whatever. Anyways, yeah. Um, Siring the child thing. And this was, was, yeah. Fucking no. So he's sticking to his, nope. Just like you, I can't. Nope. And he's like, no. And he goes and gets a picture. He's like, here you go, kind of thing. And at first, all Aslan can see is Neri. This is a picture of Neri and her family on the boat. And then Sam says something like, she looks just like you, doesn't she? Or something offhand. And he fixes his eyes on that little girl. And he realizes that he's been holding from him. And then Sam takes great pleasure in telling all about how Neri's had Isla and um, she's like what he's her, missed, like and and that her. right teaching her Turkish and all this stuff and and that she has pleasantly surprised him. Now he's decided that Aslan needs to marry her and that he wants to bring both of them to so, Turkey. Yeah, he underestimated Neri, and he shouldn't have because he's now realized that she could be an option for him. And now that he realizes that. He is not so brainwashed that he thought that he can concoct this story, right? Like you said, he's like, I'm bringing them both here. You can marry him and I will use them Mm -hmm. as the bargaining chip now because now I realize you will do anything 
for them. Mm -hmm. And Aslan literally has a heart attack mm -hmm. and passes out. Like legitimately has a heart attack. Legitimately and, has a heart an attack. An actual heart attack. An actual like, oh heart my attack. God, I'm having a heart attack. No, it's legitimate heart attack. So when he wakes up from his heart attack, things have happened in between. The doctor has seen him, but he doesn't know. When he wakes up from his heart attack, Sam is in his pajamas, basically rousing him out of bed. He's like, we have to go. We have to go. We have to go now. And he's like, I don't understand. He's like, I need to get my my brace or, you know. His prosthetic? Yeah. There we go. Thank you. And Sam's like, we don't have time for that. Like, just lean on me. Let's go. And they are like, right. He's like, what's going on? We're under attack. Like, they're, they're booking it. And there's all kinds of shouting and gunfire and all kinds of shit going on in the background. As I just woke up, like. From having a heart attack and has been passed out for like over a day. He has like no idea what's going on. Last he knew, Sam was threatening his wife and daughter, for lack mm -hmm. of better terms, but to him. And now they're running for their lives, supposedly, and they lock themselves into this room and he turns to him and he hands him a gun. And he's like, I need you to shoot whoever comes in that door. And so then the door busts open and Aslan turns and right in between the eyeballs shoots his dad. Fuck yeah. He's I like, was so don't excited shoot ever. I don't even remember what the words were, but he was like, basically like, bitch, don't you threaten what's mine. Mm. Loved it. So great. So then, then he gets taken into it's, custody. Uh, you're under so arrest. Funny. That was his five years. So I had to go through all of that. And I was like. Really, I just wanted to see them come together right now. No. But it, okay, and then so I thought that was going to be my moment. It was not. Then he shows up to Jack. And they Anna's were in house. fact not ready for it. They were not ready for it. I was not ready for it. I was <laughs> sad. So then we fast forward. It's been like three months. He's at Jack and Anna's house. Shows up. He is looking fine. He has had three months of rehabilitation. He has spent a lot of that time in the cell. But he's been able to condition his body, work his body to not be so sickly. And, you know, he's, he's worked out. He's gotten a correct prosthetic fit now. He can walk correctly without being in so much pain and I limping mean, and barely. He could have gotten he one. He was in before, but, the, but, but he was a little stubborn because he well, was it's not the even pain. That, well, he, it's, he wasn't even just using the pain. He didn't want his dad to give him anything that he could use to take, then take away and be like, now well, you owe me. Anywho, he is there. He is ready. He is like gung-ho, but he's nervous. He doesn't know what's going on in these five years. He doesn't even know for sure what's real and what's not. He doesn't even know if Isla is truly his or what has been mm -hmm. kind of he doesn't know if Neri's moved on he doesn't know anything but he's at Jack and Anna's house that's where he knows to go and they see him good stuff good yeah. stuff and they know that they've just spent the last five years telling their daughter that she needs to get over him and that oh she's yeah not feeling him and he is dead and she needs to move on and they cannot face her right now. No, they, they feel cannot. so guilty. Like, And so they send him by himself to go see her. Because they just can't go. And I don't blame them. I don't him. either. Yeah. Oh, that was. Yeah. Uh, so then he shows up at Teddy Eddie's house. I love him. Teddy and Eddie's house. They're playing out in the yard with Isla. And Neri's there. And this part was so cute, though. And they just assume it's Grandma and Grandpa coming over. And. Kyle is running over to the Jeep and he comes out. So this is, I get it. Nary's his whole world. He isn't 100% sure what's real and what's not at this point. He has a lot of things. But you have this child at your feet who looks like you, who's talking to you in Turkish, who is presumably your child. You got verified that is your child by Anna and Jack. Jack, thank you. And I get it, but at the same time, like, he kind of totally, like, didn't really give her the time of day. He also just spent five years getting tortured getting by tortured. his own dad. By his own, he does not have a very good... Any emotional capacity to... That, that and he I also know. does not have a very good baseline of realistically how to be how, around how to be a anyway. dad and how to be around yeah. children so i that part i know but i just I felt like it. he literally just 
came out that of a holding a cell for yeah, but he also just that came out girl, of and then I felt like she was just whisked away. I don't whisked think away and like I okay. So here's my thing. So a he spent five years being tortured by his own dad. Then he spent three months in a cell prior to coming back, and also being like, "Hey, kid, I'm your dad." To a girl who has no, like she knows. No, the I didn't. I didn't Bruh. expect him to be like that. Oh, but okay. He could have at least. No, 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 no. But she's but never met him before. Have, and that's but the thing. she was engaging in conversation. So he could have like talked back to her. I mean, and, yeah, like, but he doesn't know. How, he didn't know how to react in general growing up with living with them for the so years. Any, he had. I know. Anywho, I just felt like it could have been handled better. It probably was on point. You're right. I just wish as a parent, he was able to get that reunion a little better. That's all. I understand it's on brand. it. It's on brand. It is on brand. I understand it. I know. You just want it wrapped up nicely. I know. Anyways, so she's whisked away by Teddy and Eddie and Narita's sobbing and dying on the grass and he goes to her and then they sob and die for hours together and they have their little reunion and neither one of them are even 100% sure what is real and what's not because mm -hmm. they've just been in agony both of them for years they've had dreams that have felt so vivid before and they just don't know if they are dreaming now so they're not yay no. happy times <laughs> so then they go have happy times and uh, neri learns what has transpired in the past five years and he has learned a little bit about what she's gone through in the past five years and he even learns about luna mare and what they've accomplished thus far and she learns about his deal with the government and how he's able to be there and how he's going to work with them undercover, basically, to dismantle the whole evil organization. But in doing so, he has to keep up a pretense. And so he gets to keep all the funds. So he's going to use them for good and he's going to invest them in Lunamari because they are broke at this point and not sure how to move on. So everything's hunky-dory. They have a lot of little time jump skips at this point where they have like a couple months later they get married and jenna is the efficient efficient the jack of all trades baby and we have once again child interaction where she's asking him how well she did he doesn't respond she keeps like trying to like put her hands in his pocket and stuff and i just i wish i don't know i wish i didn't feel like I, he got obviously better after, but yeah, in these but... parts, in these key moments, I get it. I'm no, not no, no, saying no. I don't understand. No, 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 no. Didn't he admit? I just feel for the little girl. I do too. But didn't he also admit at one point that he didn't think he could love Ayla as much as he loved Neri? Oh, he flat out said that. I'm he pretty would never sure. Love I was going to say, I believe he said that. And so... Neri kind of said the same thing. So, well, they should suck his parents they, can we just say that they, that they suck so, his parents and it kind of I'm sorry came full circle to that when the reporters were asking about kind of isla now and isla has two daughters in the present now and narita kind of makes a comment about how they would much rather be with, with the other and hang out with teddy, teddy and, eddie and eddie than them because they're not great grandparents i mean because they spend most of the time in their sea. They spend most of the time in the sea, but I mean, when... But you wrapped up in each other. And that's the thing. And that's where kind of they suck as people. Because they even went into how, and this was the part we were talking about earlier, that Teddy and Eddie ended up adopting Ayla. Well, we'll get there. We'll, oh, yeah. Actually. So, one more and then, yeah. So, the... Yeah. So... I mean, we were jumping around anyway, so I figured I know. say it. So... We're so close. So Aslan surprises Teddy and Eddie. He had built from scratch a huge house because Teddy and Eddie were all kind of distraught because they had basically raised this little girl for five years, almost five years. I mean, and they had raised this little girl that she's their whole world. And now she has her whole family now. So do they need to go their separate ways? And they were kind of uh, really upset by that. They got it, but they were saddened. And he built this huge house for them and they each would have their own wing so that they would have their own space, but they would all still be together. And it was a big surprise for them. Yay, happy, glory. But also when in doing so, 
he presented them with papers. Which I get. But it also further showcases to me that they suck as parents. So, yeah. Like, I understand so, they probably, like, I get it. But at the same time, like, they were so quick to just give away their daughter. So they made it very clear that that's not what they were doing. Well, and that's why it's confusing for us to read as Americans. It must work differently in Australia, custodial-wise. I did not Google it either. But it must work differently because here, in order for someone to adopt someone like that, the biological parents would have to give up their rights. So they give up their um, rights, but there's like open adoptions and stuff too so that they know what's going on. And I think it depends on your but I meant agreement. That they would not have guardianship is oh, what I yeah. meant. They would not gotcha. have that legal. But in the terms of this book, they are still their parents, but they also have additional legal guardians. So now they have four parents legally. So I kind of get it, but it was confusing it kinda, for us. It kind of, for me, feels like it was they, weird. They, it kind of feels like they just gave up being like her actual parents and like left the parenting to Teddy and Eddie. And then if something came up that they would just like step in for like other things. Like it just felt like they were just background characters in her life. And that Teddy it and Eddie. It was like you had a divorce situation and they remarried and now they have four parents. But none of that happened. No. And no. they all live together. No. My own naively knowledge of how the system works and so ingrained in our brains of how the system works here that kind of funky things up and i agree i don't think they necessarily were like oh we're just not parents anymore but i i just i think they were just kind of including them so that now all four of them were sharing that responsibility but it was just odd to me just so you're um, aware the birth parents have no legal rights to children in australia in australia correct if there's an adoption correct when an adoption is completed, the birth parents so remember, also refer to as the, natural parents no longer have any remember legal it's not rights. Adoption. Remember, oh, well, that's, they were adoption what they, papers. Were they, they were then? very specific that he fixed them so that they were not adoption papers because he was back in the picture and that they were adding on as additional legal guardians. I don't know if that makes a difference, but that's how it was. It was specifically spelled out that way, so I'm assuming it makes a difference. Well, then if they're legal guardians, then it makes sense because you can have parents and then have legal guardians as well. That's how. That's what. But they did. no, I'm just saying the way that you had worded it was adoption because yes, because here, ori right, yes, right, right, right. Originally, they were adoption papers, but he fixed okay. them. So yeah, in the context, if they were originally adoption papers, no, the birth parents and natural parents do not have rights to the child. They don't have anything. Gotcha. They got nothing. So originally, so, when they had drawn them up she would have had to relinquish those. Correct. Yeah, both of them would have oh. had to relinquish their rights. So guardianship completely separately. Obviously, like, I could be a legal guard. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we, it's different. So it's, gotcha. so yes, in the case of if it was actual adoption and they actually adopted her, then yes, they, it wouldn't work because legally that, that's how that happens. Ugh. Yeah. It was just, it, I don't know. I didn't like it because it just felt like it did go off of them saying I could never love my own kid as much as I love you which then maybe Teddy to me as a parent her, that's crazy but thank people that I have talked to who never wanted kids and were never like I could never love anybody more than I could ever love my partner and I could never love anybody more than I love myself as soon as they pop that kid out they're like never mind I can spread the love to everybody and we're good to right. go and so like when they were I've saying seen this it, though, in the book it was on rough. the other side where a lot of people are like no you only have to parent for 18 years that you're going to have your spouse forever, but you have That's your kids stupid. forever too. Know, but we just don't see it because we don't see it that way. Like I love everybody equally. Like I would murder for my child. Right. Yep. 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 It sucks because like, I don't know if that was like how their personality kind of ended up like being built through the books or anything. It just felt weird. But it's okay that they were selfish human beings because that's just. I understand were. that. Yeah. But then just like, didn't just give your child to Teddy and Eddie at that point. Like, obviously, Neri was not parenting well at all. Like, she just up and fucking went to Turkey. She just fucking up and went to Turkey. It was like, peace and out, knowing Girl that Scout. she could die. During and knowing that, that she could die and like didn't give two shits about her own right. kids. So I just. I, sh I don't think she's not that she didn't give two shits. I think that she was not in the emotional capability. Her kid was and... not on the top of her brain at all. She didn't. That's why I'm she saying she didn't give two shits. She was not 
considering if I go and die, that leaves my child without me. You know you what I mean? underestimate the power of her grief. I get it. But you have a kid now. We can say that from the outside. Absolutely. But she could not hear that. It just bothered me a lot. I know. So we well, learn that... Yeah, the book's those, over. <laughs> all those shocks to Aslan's system did in fact give him heart problems. But it kind of like, we leave the past of them alone. We leave them having their little weekends at Lunamari because they finally get, with all the money that Aslan has donated, they finally get it underway and underwater and get it situated. And then we get back with Neri in the, the future, the present, however we want to word this now because it's weird. And she kind of explains that you know, shit happened. Aslan had a heart attack when he was 43. He had a stroke when he was 50. His body has not been able to tolerate this stuff very well. And it's been slowly breaking him down. And even though he was able to overcome those things, it was very, very difficult for him. And, and, and he's at the point where he doesn't know how much more he can take. So during all of these interviews, during every time when she's talking to the Reese reporters, she's very, 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 very heavily hinting basically that she can say all this because it's basically her last night. And this is basically going to be her last night alive kind of thing. And it's like her time to go. Great. I'm on board with that. Awesome. We got this. So the interview is over. So she leaves. We get to see Aslan. Hunky dory. Hallelujah. But here's my fucking problem. Ab's ready to die. And so they can all just die together and the book would come full circle and it would be fine. Everything would make sense and I would be fine with that. They're old. It's okay. I mean, they're not that old, but it's fine. Instead, this whole process of her confession has like reinvigorated her. And instead she comes up and gives Aslan an ultimatum. And is like, bitch, we can die right now. And I'm here and we are going to die together, whether you like it or not, because there is no me without you. But there's another choice and you could take a chance and we can just live out whatever you have left. And if there is a time where you have another stroke or a heart attack, I will take care of it. I will end us myself and you will not have to suffer through any of that again. And I get it. But after all that buildup, for two fucking books. I'm going to say it again, like I said in that book, but the problem with this one, if they died, is it wouldn't be the, they died and like they didn't have the love. This whole books are their love story. I told Spencer last night, I know this isn't going to happen, but I really would have loved for them to die together like the old couple in the notebook did. That's what I meant. And that would have been great. When I imagined in my head, I imagined her leaving that interview room, going back to her her little, because she kept saying, I need to go back to the ocean. I need to go back to the ocean. I need to go back to the ocean. So in my mind, I imagined her going back to her little bubble pod and he was in bed, like frail and on this like last fucking, and I imagined her slipping under the covers with him, lying down with him and neither of them waking the fuck up again. So exactly like the notebook underwater i did not plan that they were planning on walking into the ocean and drowning yeah that was not on my to-do list i was list. like i but was like what? i still would have accepted it i, I mean still i would have accepted it i guess but like the ocean okay, that take shit them away. that shit's more was dark holy <laughs> shit like more bad. so anyways uh yeah uh, that is a big critique i had i i did like the line because where it of was, all the build up yeah i did like their line where it's it's someday but not today i did like that right. that was cute but i still think they should have died and if that had all happened when we didn't have all those little pieces that build up sure absolutely but you give me all my bread and then you expect me not to follow the damn trail and expect there to be fucking cake at the end ariel you wanted a twist not that kind of twist the i wanted twist. the death twist i wanted the death what she also did. very much wanted them to die right sometimes it's okay for people to die why can't we understand that i don't know but overall i really liked it 
I did write down actually as we were talking a couple things, and I don't want to bring Spencer into this, but this Please also had a, it had a theme of threes, and Spencer had but that other not really. So this one did, and here's why I say that: there were three things that were going to happen before Doom happened. Yeah, there were three things that he needed to do with his dad. Year three okay. is when he finds, when his dad finds out his ground dig technique and basically breaks him by cutting the tattoo off. Okay. And then I know that in the phone call, there was only one pop, but every single time it was that her Neri, reverberating it back. Every yeah. single time that Neri remembered it, it was always three pops. Yeah. So there was a lot of heavy threes in certain, Symbolized. especially okay. with very big things that were happening in the book. But I think that works in no 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 it, it, like it works well that's the thing is like it, it works extremely well i was just saying like i noticed a couple of them until we were talking i didn't realize actually how many theming how many? of yeah of the sure. threes and i mean it's always like yeah. there there is that big theory that everything happens in threes you know what i mean like right. especially like weirdly death but like it's not but that stuff. dress there's only twice right but i'm i'm just saying but the big the big moments in the book mm -hmm. happened around three. It was really great. I agree. I think they should have died. But that again is our own personal preference that I just yeah. it would have it would have wrapped things up at the end and because of, of how it was of built. The... Yeah, of yes. how it, of how it was all built up, it would have made more sense. It was crazy. It was like, Don't toy with me then. Mm -hmm. Don't toy with me for nothing. If you're I not do... if you're going to be afraid to to, to actually go through with it and yeah i do like the fact that her daughter is this like amazing doctor and her daughter no. works in luna mare and i was like that's fucking dope best, yeah this is so great yeah. so it yeah. just it, it, it yeah it ruined my soul i cried a lot in this whole book and i didn't cry in the last one but this one just like i don't I know what it was it just like it mm -hmm. ate at my soul a lot i want to say on a positive note i've i've, I've ranted about this in the past Kindle Translate is not great. For whatever reason, they don't use Google Translate. They use like a Bing translator and it sucks. So like if you're trying to do any kind of Russian or Polish or Turkish or anything Latin or there's a whole list of stuff that if you need translated in a Kindle book, you, you're shit out of luck. Every single time there was... Turkish in this book, whether directly or indirectly from the scene, it was translated out for the reader. And liked that there was a lot no question. Too. Yeah, no, I like especially when they were talking in full sentences. Like it was yeah. really it was so nice to read. Sometimes and... it was incorporated in because okay. they were translating it for Neri. And other times it was just literally just given to us. And yeah. I really enjoyed that and I did appreciated too. that immensely. Yeah, it helps, especially as a reader, to have that because, like you said... Especially when it is a language that Kindle sucks at. Right. And, like, I know that she has a list of translations at the end of the book for you, but I don't want to have to it's switch... It's easier this way. Well, right. Exactly. I don't want to have to keep switching back and forth between mm -hmm. the two or screenshot and then, like, pull it up as I'm reading. So it Though was... I do like when somebody puts the translations at the well, beginning Well, no, no, no. Like, also. I'm glad that it's yeah. in the book. I'm just saying, like, it's also nice to I have absolutely. it translated throughout because they don't do it to every word. When they're saying, like, one yeah. or two words here, which they've repeated over and over again, like, they're not going to obviously translate it back, but... Yeah. So, props where they do on that one. Yeah, so... Uh, but because this is an arc copy again same thing we did for lunamari we're not going to pull any amazon or goodreads for I mean, amazon won't have any but any goodreads views yeah. or anything this or one reading yeah. it will be out by the time this comes out but we are reading it when Higher. and recording this when we got them before so that being said i hope you enjoyed duet we did even though it was a heavy heavy hitter who's your favorite character honestly Teddy and Eddie, really I great. absolutely loved them. I liked that they were more in this book mm -hmm. than in Luna Mari. They were so good to Neri and such good friends to her and like really, really did what they could when she was spiraling to have some semblance of normality for the kid. And they were so understanding and they they were just good people. And yeah. I 
loved them for that. So I really enjoyed Honey too. And yeah, Billy, and so honestly, the, her dad the background still characters were here. great. So yeah, definitely for me, Teddy and Eddie, Honey and Billy, they were they were great. But Teddy and Eddie definitely. How about your least favorite? Well, obviously, Zara sucks, and obviously, Sam sucks. So I'm gonna go. On a strange... I was going to say, you're going to get controversial on us. I'm gonna, going to go on a strange limb here. And I'm going to say, especially since what I said on the last book about like who I liked, I'm going to say I did not like her mom. I changed my team because in the last book, I had said she was probably my favorite, but that I felt like maybe we missed the behind the scenes communication possibly. We did not. We learned that in this book. She just sucks as a mom. She had no clue what was going on in her daughter's life. She does not communicate well with her daughter. She was blind and oblivious to everything. And that's probably why Neri's a shit mom because I'm just full circling it. Plus, she's super obsessed with her husband, her job, her own hobbies. And that's fine as a human being. I'm just saying I felt like she was not a great mom. So that can kind of feed into why Neri was the way she was with her Mm -hmm. own daughter. Exactly. That's where I'm going with that. So Zara was obviously my least favorite. And of course, like Derry talks about how they did make up as friends and they get coffee every as week. Adults. As adults. As adults. Like way adults. Um, I say adults. They're adults in this book, but I meant like as way, well, like. Yeah, way, way later. Old. I fuck Zara in the and ass with a cactus. I don't care. I am going to get real controversial here. My least favorite character is second half Neri. I don't like the decisions that she made. I don't like the reckless, just hear me out. I don't like the the recklessness of the behavior that she did. I understand that she is heartbroken and this, this, this. And again, as an outsider and as a mom, that shit put me off. And I get it as a character and as the character building that she was done. I, I don't care. And I understand how she was raised, but she was reckless. She didn't give two shits about her own kid. It felt as if she was just, like, throwing her daughter away to Teddy and Eddie. I knew that she knew that they would take care of her. But, like, it just felt like there was so much trauma going on. I get it. But the decisions that she made made me not like her. And then, like, towards the end, with the selfishness of, if you go, I go. And so, like, here's your option. Ultimatum, either you go now and I also go with you. Or you can wait. And he's in fucking pain. And, like, his heart is not great. And she's like, or you can just wait, and then I will take care of it for you later. Which, whatever. But, like, the selfishness that she had in the second half of this book really put me off to Neri. And I loved her in the last book. I loved her personality and all that other stuff. And, like, sure, maybe all the trauma and doom that has happened in this entire, like, series of books, like, changed her as a person. I just didn't like her and I wanted to punch her in the face and be like, your husband is clearly suffering and clearly physically suffering and you're going to make him choose to hold out just because you don't want to be without him and instead he's going to continue suffering and continue being in pain because we all know he's going to do whatever you want him to do because he loves her that much. like. It was just her selfishness I didn't like, and that put yeah. me off of her. I don't usually not like a main character, and I liked her up until it happens. part of this book. And it just, it the stuff she did really rubbed me the wrong way, and I think the shit with the daughter, like, put me over the edge. Mm. And I was like... And I could see the excuses with the grief and whatnot, but I can also see your point in just who she was as a person. And, I mean, you're entitled to who you like and who you don't like. So I've not liked main characters. She was written very, very well. She's just a shitty person. <laughs> like She was a right. good, yeah. well-written character. She just ended up being a shitty person. And a humanized character. And mm-hmm. that maybe sometimes I feel like you truly really don't like the the characters that are super humanized. I've liked books. some characters that have been super humanized. When... Especially when they're superhumanized to a fault, like when they're not great. 
Because humans themselves are not great. We make a lot I'm of I'm a shitty choices. person. I will fully right, admit that. Right. Like, let's be honest. Like, we, we I, am not any, of... <laughs> I am not anyone's favorite main character. Like, let's be honest. I'm not even a great main character in my own life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the main character in my life. Are you kidding? But it's just... It's I'm definitely not it's, the favorite. <laughs> it's not that I don't like her because she was humanized. I just... The decisions that she made were terrible. Were selfish for you. Yeah. So no, they were adults the whole time no. in this book. Do we They're not want adult to enough for me. Do we want to keep, I was going to say, do we want to keep them rating or do we not want to because we didn't in the last one? I personally will not. Okay. I I don't think that they were adult enough for me. I need you in your like late 20s before I get you. 18? I can't do the 18 thing. They were really, so, really young. Maybe like 25 yeah, and older. I mean, 25 and older. We'll I mean, they one, were but... 25. For a good chunk. No, I just... They, the second half, they were 25. Uh, she was 25 and... I know. I just... I can't do it. We didn't do it in the last book. I can't do it in this book. Okay. That's... We'll leave it up to interpretation. I will say... I will say, say some... though, that to us, 18 is that adult age. Oh, but yeah. But to Australia is 16. So it's even... It's yes. even more for them. It just, just... saying. I just... It grosses me out. I'm also 33. So I can't... When I was in my 20s, absolutely, I could read an 18-year-old banging people. And I'm like, yeah, this is great. Oh, it's but definitely now, not my but, preference at all. But now, but I was just, as a, yeah. like an adult, it's different. So obviously, like, if you read this and you are younger and that's fine for you, that's great. I just, it makes me uncomfortable and I don't want to read it. The only issue I had was the word speared because I don't want to hear of anyone spearing anybody. And that's all. Just to notate, Koromare plays in... Because Lunamare was the underwater biosphere that they built. But Koromare is the charity that they created to give back to the earth and the community and the sea. So I just wanted to explain where kind of that fit in with the book. Oh, I had one other thing. And I remembered it as you were talking about things. It (laughs) plays into three again. It was 60%. And... They were talking about how they were joking that Lunamara sounded like a cult. And she goes, oh, after all, we have the same morals and stuff. And she goes, a story for another time, I'm afraid. This interview is already long enough to create a book, two books, a trilogy even. And I was like, is there a third book coming out? That's no. all I could think of. It's okay. because, so because on that I ju- note. I'm just saying, it's not, it's not, it's a duet. It's fine. No. I'm just saying no. when that happened, I was like, Please don't fuck with me here. I can't go through anymore. On that note, I do hope that you went through this duet with us and went through this journey with us. It was worth the read. It was worth the ride. If you have not, take it now. We hope you enjoyed this fun, fun, fun random, weird drive <laughs> ride of emotional What part torture? of this was fun for you? This is so sad. And it was I don't great. think I can cry anymore. So that was fun. You're going to cry again. I already know it. It's fine. I am ready to read some palate cleansers for myself because I am sad. Yeah. But that was, we didn't even rate it. What are we rating it ourselves? I gave this book four and a half stars because of the ending for me. While I understood what was trying to be accomplished, I just didn't like the present Aslan thing. So yes, they were my problems. But that's why I knocked it down to four and a half stars. I am sitting at a four for a variety of reasons. It was good. I liked this book a lot. The ending really knocked it down for me. And I think just Neri sucking as a person. I don't know. I liked it. It was very heart wrenching. It really, I liked the twisties and turny things. And I liked it made me think I just, there were parts of it that I, I just liked the other book better. It didn't do it for you. Yeah. Yeah. It still was a great book. Do not get me wrong. I will tell everyone that they should yeah. absolutely read this book. You got to read both of them. That's fair though. But in my personal opinion, like it just, it didn't do for me what I wanted to do for me. Like Ariel said, the ending, I wish, you know. It was quick for me. So it was, it was definitely up there for me. It was, it was just, a like good said, second half of this long life story. And I'm glad that it wasn't cut short to like kind of yeah. end the story and they did flesh out stuff i just i felt the personality change generic from last book to this book especially her as an older person like she was sassy to begin with but like it kind of got like well, she had been broken 
I understand that. It just, I don't know. It was still a good book. It just is a four for me instead of, I think Luna Mars yeah. is a little bit better. It just, it was still good though. And I will not knock this book at all. It's well written. Characters are fleshed out pretty well. Like it, it was good. I just had my own issues and they're my personal preferences. Read the damn book. So our next special, we are doing something kind of funky and we chose our own book. We kind of said no to the wheel and said, nope, we're going to read what we want to read. And we are reading our own book. And I'm going to make fun of Crystal for like a half a second because she makes fun of me enough and make fun of myself at the same time. So it's kind of, it kind of goes full circle. She makes fun but, of me on a um, daily basis. It's fine. She gives me shit all the time because though she hasn't done it in a while and I appreciate it. But apparently though, I don't think I do because in my mind, I screw things up all the time, so I say the wrong words all the time. But apparently, I say words all the time that she thinks I pull out of my ass. And where are you going with this? I'm working on it. Okay, <laughs> none of this that, is making sense. That, 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 that she thinks I like dictionaried them or something before the conversation. But Thesaurus. I see. I'm not smart enough for that. I can barely remember Fuck you. what you're I'm a saying. teacher. Get the fu get fucked. Ariel. I can remember Get what i'm saying fucked. but i'm saying i can barely remember what i'm saying in the sentence never mind let's look something up to maybe use really so i notated just a little tidbit for next special there's a word in the next book that i had to look up in the dictionary you're welcome crystal because i didn't know it it was amalgamation and i'm gonna find a way one way or another to use it in a sentence for you because it's a new word I learned. Don't ask me what it means because no, I'm just kidding. Go get thoroughly fucked. Can you arrange that? I could. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding.